So it must have been fall 28. Why do I still have this mask on, man? I guess I was a little cold. You know, you put that mask on, you start feeling cold. Taking your mask off feels like, must feel like what women feel like when they take their bra off at the end of the day. It's got to be the same feeling. Whew. Feel better already. All right, I can breathe, man. So it must have been the fall of 2018. I just made the decision to leave my job to pursue a better job, to pursue another endeavor. I had already basically got hired at a Range Rover store. Um, and, you know, I was supposed to have my start date. We had already booked it. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I got the interview. Everything went well. I got my start date. But then a good friend of mine, uh, Shanae, hits me. And she's an, actually, I think it was uh, Shanice who hit me and said that I would be a good fit. I should audition to be on the Steve Harvey show. And... I was like, hell yeah, I'm about that. What do you need? So I'm self-taping, you know, I'll figure it out. What do you need? I submitted my self-tape. Everybody loves it. And they choose me and select me to be on to do a segment with Steve Harvey. So at this point, after I changed my draws, because I'm that excited, you know, <laughs> I'm calling my mom. I'm calling my people. Yo, I'm going to be on a Steve Harvey show. Just wait, man. Oh, for this shit on these niggas. Just wait, dog. Let's go with the hell. Hell yeah. They tell me that I'm filming the Steve Harvey show the same date I'm supposed to start at this Range Rover dealership. So I'm excited. The car business has always been my thing. I'm excited for this first date and this opportunity. But they book it the same day. So I'm like, all right, well. I'm going to have to change my start date. We're going to have to figure something out because I got to do the Steve Harvey show. Are you kidding me? He's the king of comedy. And I'm just, I'm a, I'm a tadpole in these streets, baby. So I asked him, I said, hey, guys, could I just start? You know, usually it's no problem. Could I just move my start date to Tuesday, the following day? They said, no, no, no. We have mandatory, mandatory training and your whatever you call the, you know, your new hire shit. I was just like, come on, man. Can, we, can I start just another day? I really have something else going on. They wouldn't flex at all. So I did what any real nigga would do during that time. I said, Steve Harvey Show, here I come, baby. I'm on the way. This is what I came here for. So I made the decision to, to pass that first date uh, on the job that I had, which was tough because I got a family. Like I got a, a daughter that I love very much, wifey who's looking for me to be the provider. You know, she one of them Southern women. A man needs to provide and protect. So I was like, oh, shit, man. Charlie, how you going to pass up this job? But anyway, I was like, yo, y'all know what I'm here for. So... I told them, all right, well, I just didn't show, you know, for my first day. And I decided to go film the Steve Harvey show. So now I'm super excited. I got to come. I got to kill this because now I'm choosing to do the Steve Harvey show instead of take this job. So I get fresh. I put on my shirt, my tie, my blazer, my jacket. I'm clean. Took a shower. I'm playing Kurt Franklin in the shower. And I'm thinking, God, it's going down, man. I'm, this is my time. So I get to the studio. As soon as I get to the studio, they tell me who to ask for. The guy at the gate lets me in. I go where I'm supposed to park. I see a Rolls Royce. That's got to be Steve's shit, man. Now I'm feeling extra good. His face is all over the place. The studio was in Studio City, and it was just a really, it was a really, really big day for me to be in that type of environment because it's so much of what I desire for myself. So to see someone else that came from nothing to make himself great, it was just, it was a good energy to be on. You know, not like I was always the biggest Steve Harvey fan. Oh, yeah, he's my favorite. You know, I got a lot of respect for what he's done. So I'm on the studio a lot, tripping out right now. And I'm going through my lines and we kind of are preparing what we're going to do for this set that they have scheduled for me and Steve. And it's basically about like a potluck. You know, we're doing this potluck kind of thing where we're talking about, you know, the things that you don't like eating when you're at these office parties and shit. So I'm like, cool, I'll go through my things. I'm kind of getting familiar with what I have to say. And I'm trying to get Steve's to give me some advice. Y'all know that's what he does. He gives advice about everything. My relationship, my man, my husband. Well, first of all, you know, he always does that shit. So I practice my, my little shit. I'm ready to go. Now it's game time. You know, I'm nervous. I peed three times before it was time for me to go on set, get it all out of my system. I'm sitting on stage with Steve, and I'm like, all right, man, this is the moment. He already didn't really say much to me. You know, he was, he was very light. He was professional. But I'm over, hey, Steve, how you doing? What's happening? Looking like a slave that just got out his first day. Hey, how you doing? I'm just so happy to be here. How you doing? Everything good? And it just, we just didn't quite jail for whatever reason, man. I, it was time for me to start getting my words out. This nigga cut me off. And I was like, God, that Steve, I'm trying to be great, man. But it just, it, it, it didn't jail. You know, he, you know, I think maybe it was our personalities. He's just outspoken. But for whatever reason, it just didn't make some blend well. So we were supposed to go to, to, to another segment of the stage where, you know, we got the table and the food set up. I mean, I'm ready. But that shit just does not jail, man. And I knew at that moment while I was on stage, this shit is not going to go on TV. 
And I feel like I just felt it because it just didn't, it didn't roll over smooth. So needless to say, you know, I'm super, I was super excited about the experience. You know, Ice Cube was on the same episode and, you know, a couple of other, you know, celebs. And I'm sitting in the dressing room like, yo, this is going to be crazy. <laughs> but, you know, one thing I, I learned from that process is, you know, going on that show, still having that experience, which I'm grateful for. But, you know, I, I learned at that time that, you know, we all have our plan. We all think what we know is going to be our big break or how our, uh, our trip to success is going to look. But you don't know. And I think if you just continue to live, to live your life like, I don't know. You know, I don't know where it's coming from, but I know it's coming. You know, so that's what, you know, that, that experience taught me is to embrace the process. And uh, it's not going to come when you want it, but it's going to come in due time, man. So trust the process, embrace the process, and keep chasing greatness, baby. So that's what I've been living by ever since. That's been two years ago, baby. And uh, I'm back in the range of a business, so I'm at a different store, a different dealership. But I just thought the irony of that shit is crazy. So now I'm busting heads at another dealer doing my thing and still on the path to greatness, man. So... Hope you love my story. You can expect to hear crazy ass stories, wild stories, all here on Do Tell with Laugh After Dark. And guess who's gonna be your host? <laughs> That's right. I'm your boy, Charlie Wilson. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Look, look at y'all out here tuning in. Okay. Okay. No, hey, thank you for tuning in. You make sure you continue to tune in. Tell your friends, your baby mama, your baby. I, 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 tell him too. Make sure y'all like, follow, subscribe, support, all things do tell. I've been your host, Charlie Wilson. I'm here with Laugh After Dark, baby. You know how we do.